National Association of Realtors, so let's get straight to Diana for it. Diana. Aaron, as expected, the extension and expansion of the first-time homebuyer tax credit has realtors more optimistic than ever before. The realtor's chief economist, Lawrence Yun, releasing his housing forecast at this hour. Yun says the effect of the credit will be to stabilize home prices. He also projects that we'll see more first-time buyers initial than initially projected, 2.3 to 2.4 million this year alone. You'll, of course, remember the tax credit was extended through the end of April 2010. A survey by the realtors finds first-time buyers accounted for a record 40 seven percent of home buyers in the past year up 41 percent from a year ago as for the forecast yun predicts existing home sales to total 5.01 million this year a gain of two percent over last year and then rise 13.6 percent in 2010 yun notes risks such as unemployment remain the rate on the 30-year fixed he says will average 5.3 percent in the fourth quarter of this year and rise gradually to 5.8 percent by the end of next year as for home prices he says expect them to turn positive in 2010 always the caveat with this report though this is the realtor's forecast realtors who of course sell homes for a living Aaron well maybe they figure if they say it loud enough it might come true all right Diana staying with us and, and let's talk about that home price forecast whether prices are going to go up again in 2010 it would be a momentous event if true and well what about lending standards Matt Garrison's with us founder of condoshark.com and Ken Rosen chairman of the Fisher Center for real estate at UC Berkeley uh, Professor Rosen, let's start with you to react to the headlines Diana was sharing with us. I mean, it, and I know Diana put the caveat in there that this is realtors, but they're looking for home prices to start going up in 2010 and sales to go up 13.6%. Would that be a home run, if true? Uh, it, first of all, I think it is likely to happen. This uh, expansion of the home buyer uh, tax credit is going to light a wildfire under housing demand for the next nine months. And, uh, and I think that, if anything, their forecast is too conservative. I know it's hard to believe I'm saying that, but uh, people are going to move their sales forward in time. They're going to buy, uh, so they close by July 1st to take advantage of the tax credit. So there's going to be a huge surge in the next uh, eight or nine months in activity to take advantage of this. What happens after that, Matt Garrison? Would you agree with the premise that we could see an increase, and then what happens after the credit goes away in the summer? Well, I think, uh, you know, Stimulus is good, uh, you know, for right now. I, I think it's a, it's a good point. What happens moving forward when, you, when the stimulus ends? Um, in Chicago here, we saw a huge rush of activity in September um, as people tried to take advantage of the $8,000 credit. And it's fallen off a cliff in the last three or four weeks. Showings are way down. Um, the market is dead. And since the announcement uh, of the extension, we haven't seen that much uh, of an increase. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Diana, what do you make of what they each had to say? And, and I guess especially Ken saying, look, maybe the National Association of Realtors is uh, not optimistic enough. Uh, well, I would have a lot of concerns with that. Number one, because there's just simply too much government stimulus in the housing market right now. Yes, you have till July 1st to close, but you have to sign a contract on that home to take advantage of the credit by April 30th. And that's just the beginning of the usually historically big season in home buying and selling. And we must not forget the importance of the Fed's program buying anything Fannie and Freddie have to sell. That ends at the end of March, and mm. that's going to have a real effect on mortgage interest rates. It's one time, one thing to get either 6500 bucks or eight thousand bucks on that tax credit but what if you're seeing mortgage rates up around 5.8 percent that may change your mind 5.8 percent that was that diana though that was the forecast of the nar right? that's the prediction by the nar i've seen others predict it to go even higher if there's right. not a market for those mortgages from fannie and freddie i mean i don't know whether i'm reading too much into this ken rosen but if we get mortgage rates as high as 5.8 or even a little bit higher and realtors think that in that environment they could still see a more than 13 percent increase in sales that would show well, there's a more appetite for, for mortgages at higher rates than some people thought. I think what we're seeing, though, is a shift in the time frame of demand. Mm -hmm. If you are planning to buy a house in the next 12 months, 16 months, you're going to do it earlier. So that's why I'm saying the number is going to look better earlier. Uh, if we stop all these programs, uh, it's certainly, uh, Dana's absolutely right, it would be a headwind for the market. Mm -hmm. But the ho I think the whole point of the program uh, is to move demand forward in time to stimulate the economy now when we're at the depths of the recession. So it's absolutely the right policy at this time. Diana, what happens after? I mean, this is the cash for clunkers conversation too, right? I mean, if, if, if what Ken says is true, 
eventually this cre credit goes away. Have we stolen all of the sales? I, I think you've definitely moved demand forward, just as he says. I agree with that. And that's what happened with the tax credit this year. The question is, what's going to happen when you eat up all that supply that's on the very low end of the market? We've already seen that 70% of home sales are occurring on homes under $250,000. These are speculators, investors, and your first-time home buyers. Now, if we see more foreclosed properties go onto the market, if the banks start releasing those as expected, and we see new resets in the payment option arm mortgages that we're expecting to see, if we see that inventory come back on the market, you'll still see activity on that very, very low end and in the distressed market. But what about the move up buyers? What about the rest of the market, which is really dead right now and is not benefiting from any of this government stimulus? We have a screen, and Matt, wanted to get you to react to this first, called uh, the new normal, which is what everybody wants to know. What is the new normal and how? So uh, these are just a couple of points uh, that Diana had noted. Uh, according to the, you know, with the FHA loans that have gotten so much coverage over the past couple of days, they only demand three and a half percent down. With the with the tax credit for new home buyers, it's actually effectively less. The USDA trying to get people in rural areas to buy demanding zero percent down. A lot of people may look at that and say, I thought that we were back to uh, a period of austerity and solid lending standards and 20 percent down. But isn't that how we got into the problem? I mean, that, that's, why, uh, that's why I'm skeptical that we're going to see uh, the, this recovery in 2010. I mean, it, it, why don't we just do a $100,000 tax credit or a million-dollar tax credit? At some point, that has to end. What's going on right now is there's a solid bid out there, but the ask is way too high by the sellers. And until that changes, you know, I don't think we're going to have a real recovery. You know, we can put a Band-Aid on it temporarily, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I, I don't like the odds moving forward. I know, and you've, you've made that point a couple of times here on this show, that we just don't see sellers willing to put houses on the market for prices buyers are willing to pay. Ken Rosen, what do you think about that point, though, about lending standards? Well, uh, lending standards are not at all the same as subprime. Uh, in anything that was done in 2006 and 7 and 8 clearly wasn't done well. But the lending standards today are very tough. Yes, the lower down payments are there, but they're verifying income. They're really qualifying people in a way that makes sense. Uh, I also think the best time to give low down payment loans is at the bottom of the cycle. So this is the right policy. You want to encourage people to borrow. When the house prices are low and you're at the bottom of the cycle, you want to discourage them when you're at the top of the cycle. Remember also that all these programs are not aimed at speculators. You have to be uh, owner-occupied to get these uh, uh, loans that we're talking about and the tax credit has been changed it's been added to uh, 6500 for any home buyer who buys a house under eight hundred thousand dollars so that's where the trade-up market benefits are going to come in a big way inventories are already coming down so i think that that we've really got an affordable housing market now these extra stimulus programs will get us over the hump again the hump is the slow selling season the next six months at the peak selling season i think you know we certainly could have an issue if the economy doesn't begin to recover and we get interest rates moving up a lot. If, you can, if you've got, got 3.5% skin in the game and prices go down another 5%, what's going to stop those people from walking? I, I agree with you. The underwriting standards are much better. But that's just, that's not that much skin in the game. But think, one thing uh, I could add, if I could add one thing to what you were saying earlier, though, about the speculators not being, not qualifying for the tax credit, the problem with the investors in the market is, number one, it's good that they're getting in and eating up inventory, but they're doing it with cash. And that is pushing a lot of those first-time home buyers out of the market on the low end where they really need to be. We saw this, I've heard from realtors in Las Vegas and in all the distressed markets saying that people who want to get in and buy with a mortgage and do it the right way, the way the first-time home buyer tax credit works, are being yep. pushed out by cash-only buyers because the bank who own those homes want the cash. They That's 100% true. All right. Thanks very much to all three of you. Obviously, lots more questions to come in housing. But an interesting point there that now is when you actually would cut the amount of money you'd put down uh, at the bottom of the cycle as opposed to at the top from Ken Rosen. All right. The markets are